Oh, hey, we're live, I think. I think we're here. So let's see. Do we see. have smooth bit rates? I am told uh, that we've had some technical problems. Can folks hear me? Yeah. Can folks? Oh, we are getting positive affirmations of audio. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. A good evening and smooth bitch rates going forward. Uh, my name is Ajay. I use he, him pronouns. Um, and this, I am DMing Game of the Gods of New Braemar, brought to you by Vibrant, Visible, visible Victorious, the uh, person called One Shot Series here on Welcome to the Party. Um, yes, uh, welcome to the party. Let's give the spiel. Uh, welcome to the party. In Do we have audio? We have audio. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where did I? Where did I leave off? Let's start with Devin Rue again. Yes. Let us start with Devin Rue. Devin Rue is a maker of fine fantasy maps. You can find all her amazing stuff at R-U-E-I-N-K dot com. And then we wanted to shout out Tabletop Loot. That's L-O-O-T, not L-U-T-E. Uh, maker of dice, shirts, mugs, and more. You can find all their great stuff at tabletoploot.com. And of course, So Nerdware, our official merch sponsor, Use the code WELCOME at checkout to get 10% off your next purchase at SoNerdWear.com. SoNerdWear. That's what all the nerds wear. I need to get some stuff. I, 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 I'm new to this. I know. I um, haven't got anything either. Yeah, we'll work on that. Uh, and of course, the best way to support this channel and our ongoing work is through our Patreon. There you can get interviews with players, mods, DMs, behind-the-scenes looks at our game from art to notes. It will help us and our goal to be able to underwrite amazing writers, artists, and creators from across the gaming universe as we try to create a showcase of their amazing work here on this channel, all for a small monthly fee. Check it out at patreon.com slash welcome parts to the RPG. I hope I still have audio. Uh, it seems we still have audio. Wonderful. Um, and yes, don't forget to join us on this Discord here at the link given in the chat. I am pointing in the right direction, I hope. Uh, and keep the conversation going. I was not pointing in the right direction. That is rather embarrassing. Um, <laughs> All righty. Um, I've been exclamating things. <laughs> All righty. Um, I'm going to make sure not to look at the live stream as it is, because it's about five seconds behind me. Um, anyway. Uh, we are playing um, a one-shot in this setting that I've cooked up together, cooked up myself, called The Gods of New Braemar, um, written in, in association with a couple of really, really wonderful people. Um, so, uh, New Braemar, this setting is steampunk with a bit of a maritime twist. Um, think, like, your classic, like, steampunk styles, but on boats. Um, at sea uh, with elder sea gods that uh, listen to what you want and uh, blood magic it's it's, it's a yes a boat punk um, uh, it's 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 a great time um, and we are going to be playing uh, 
a fun little one shot uh, among the uh, the underground. We're doing a little bit of a like a well, it's called blood running. I'll give you that much. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, my name is Ajay. I use he him pronouns, um, and this is the setting that I've been working on for a little while. Uh, it's going to be real fun. Uh, let's 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 go around the uh, let's go around the table here. Uh, let's start with uh, Miriam. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, tell us uh, about your character, and uh, tell us about uh, the last time you got soaked. How about that? Okay. <laughs> it's not a shower, <laughs> except for a shower. I did not think that through. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we are now going into the after 10 p.m. special. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it has to be uh, after 10 somewhere. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> my name is Mariam, and I will be playing Rehan Shamai Zadeh. Uh, she, her, she is an Ishandan expat trying to get far away from her wealthy trading family and is uh, uh, a part of the new Braemar underground. And the last time I ever got soaked was probably about a year ago, um, about this time last year when I was putting all my seedlings out onto the balcony and it started raining and I got soaked through and through, but I didn't need to water the plants. So that was good. That's me. <laughs> and then I think that question threw it off. <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> all right, Morgan, tell us a little about yourself. Um, um hey. your character. Yeah, I'm Morgan. Um they, them, and she pronouns. I use both. Um, however, I'm playing Joseph Perkins. He uh, they goes by he him pronouns. Uh, basically, Joseph uh, grew up in Irvinus, which is like a sea area, I suppose. I don't. I, I think it is. Um, he's, it's way out yonder. It's it's that way. Um, basically, <laughs> he got into some underground smuggling operations and. Um, He's a bit of a thrill seeker, uh, and he is a, a fishy boy. Oh, uh, he's he's got some fish scales, got some little more teeth than he did, um, and he's a little he's a little beefy. So I'm excited to play him. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> so surf and turf. Ah, uh, yeah. More surf than turf. Let's be real here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh and uh finally 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 uh uh lily tell us a little bit about yourself and your character hi i'm lily and i'm gonna be playing hannah house um but she goes by moon because she was born on a god's moon which is a holy day when the full moon glows and otherworldly purple she is a divinator um who kind of grew tired of listening to the struggles of people around her and not being able to do much about it. So now she is trying to stick it to the man and she's a bit of a hothead. Uh, so she gets herself into situations without a plan. And that's the only way to do it. <laughs> yep. I think this sounds like a fantastic group. I don't. I don't see any flaws in this plan at all. Yeah. No. Oh no! no. This, this be for yep. uh, um, so for the chat, I will um, pick out that uh, a divinator is an individual who uh, sings. Um, if anyone's heard of Sacred Harp, like Sacred Harp music, um, imagine that. Where you sing so loudly and so powerfully that uh, the elder, uh, these indescribable elder gods of the sea will literally listen. And um, if you ask nicely enough, uh, cast lightning down upon your foes. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's quite a gift. Remind um, me not to get on your bad side. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
anyway, I want to double check. Do we still have audio? I want to double check that because we've had some issues with that so far. Uh, so far, it looks like this video is still going pretty good. Yeah, I think we're doing good, actually. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Audio's and we good. got a yes on the audio. Thank you, Michi. Um, shout out for Michi for being awesome, by the way. Um, yeah. And let us begin. Oh, bam! Uh, we start in in, in the uh, in an abandoned looking mill building in the uh, town of Revik. Um, Revik is about as close as a city as New Braemar gets. This this backwater of the Central Sea to an outsider, little more than sand and rock and salt and terrible weather and even worse beer it's it's abysmal but it is a place that is uniquely tuned to the song of the gods and it is the home for you three for one reason or another we see the three of you meet you've you've worked together a little bit before and this is, I don't know, maybe the second or, or third little run you've done together um, where effectively you smuggle healing blood. Um, as a, a neat little side effect of the way blood magic works in this world, or ichromancy, as folks will call it here, is that um, it is perhaps one of the best ways to heal someone. A little vial of blood treated with miscellaneous um, other ingredients and a few runes. Just one sip and the wounds will close up. Strange maladies will suddenly find themselves gone. And provided you are one who does not think such magic as foul heretical arts, you can do a lot of good with it. Uh, and you are going to be smuggling a shipment of them to a place that does consider them dark magic because holy shit, blood magic. Oh, I should make, holy cow, blood magic. Um, <laughs> Question. Uh, uh, is it common knowledge what blood it is? We'll get to that. Okay. Um, so the three of you are meeting um, at the back entrance of this mill building. Um Rehan, tell me what the front of this building is. What's the cover? So, hmm. Like, what's the legitimate business going on here? I would say probably like an apothecary of some sort, like or like a spice market, because I really like. I can. I can. Me, player, can talk a lot about spices and stuff, so I'm perfectly comfortable it being a front for, like, spices and, like, an apothecary spice mm -hmm. sort of a place where you could use it for cooking. You could also use it for healing arts, like um, making salves and bombs and stuff like that, or for cosmetic purposes, beauty, um, fragrances, etc. Yes, this is... Uh... The front says uh, Shira Sakurai's apoth Apothecary. Um, the actual sign seems a little beaten, battered, a little bit fallen off its uh, perch, but it's a legitimate business, I assure you. Um, Morgan, tell me what's the weather on this on this moon's day night? On this Moon's Day night, um, I'm going to say it's, it's, well, I don't know. Now I'm going like, what season is it in? What, how close it is this? <laughs> I'm like, I'm just digging in. Um, Let's say, I want to suggest for season. We are in the month of, let me see if I can pull out what the months are in this world. We are in the month of Urabor, the sh which represents the shift from autumn to winter. Uh, it is, in fact, let's call it the uh, 
the 22nd day of Urubor. So it's a little chilly. <laughs> it's uh, probably like that wet, cold breeze because we're like a waterfront on the water. So it's going to have that nice wetness in the air. So it's like a, it's a humid, but it's also really cold. It's, it's lovely time of year. Let me tell you. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's awful and I hate it. <laughs> You're not and sure. Lily, Go ahead. Mm-hmm. And Lily, tell me um, why exactly there's a bar fight across the, across the road. There's a, a what? There's a bar fight across the road. Oh, a bar fight Let's across the road? Who threw the first punch? Um, well, I think, I think what happened was um, yesterday, it was actually really nice. It was like warm um, in the beginning of the day. And then it was pouring rain. Um, from dinner time on. So everyone was kind of stuck inside and, you know, people's tempers kind of got the best of them. Um, maybe there was like a, a tiny landslide this morning. So the kids didn't go to school and now everybody is just on their last rope. And this fight honestly it was started over the the bartender um like put a beer down on on the counter and one guy paid for it and another guy just like came over and took the beer and walked away with it and that's how the fight started and as as the three of you walk up to the store you can kind of hear the shouts of a man speaking in of a man yelling in a characteristic Bray Marner accent as the script just yelling at what you can only imagine is a, a poor barrel and washer shore. Just yelling, this is what you get for taking my liquor. Um, and as the three of you get to a battered wooden door um, that has no apparent markings, but you know. This is the uh, this is the operating room for an ichromancer known as the Moray. What do you three do? I do whatever would be the customary sign of I'm here for the like you know like the it's not necessarily knock and go in. It could be something like a very particular knock or. Um, looking for some sort of a key uh, under some flower pot or something um, and try to enter, I imagine, because would, would this be my first time or have I already done this trip a couple of times? You've done this before. You know the knock. Yeah, so I, I, do, um, I do the sort of um, and just wait and so there's a little slat about at eye level on this door and it opens and you hear you hear the voice of a man who has what seems like a mild cold <clears throat> yeah uh i see come on in hey where's my and a haircut <laughs> but I and I just do that all the time, even though that's not what's done. <laughs> you hear a kachunk chunk on the uh, inside door, and you know that the door is unlocked. You should, uh, uh, as as I sort of walk in very calmly, I just look and say, "You should, you should uh, see a healer about that." You see, the thing is, um. I am the healer. Exactly. <clears throat> Check in with yourself. You know, it's a have equilibrium, inner peace. I'm sure that appointment go very fast. So the Moray, he always wears a black suit and a cloak atop that. 
and a hood that covers his eyes and a mask over his face. So you can't quite read his expressions, but his body language is very much that of a man who is already sick of your jokes. <laughs> are you here to do business or are you here to make fun of me? Eh, I mean, I like doing, I like having my business and pleasure, but business it is. <sighs> he just, he, he, he's already standing behind a desk and he just takes palms, just, <sighs> all right. So you guys are headed over to, um, what's it, uh, uh, it's a winter upon the sea, right? Yep. Oh, me. where are my manners? Moon, Yusuf, Moray, Amore. I know you all. <laughs> <laughs> Yusuf just gets the head nod, like, what's up? And Hannah, like, actually tries to offer her hand, like, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. And, uh, <laughs> And the more I actually extends a handshake to uh, to, ha- to Hannah, to, to Moon, um, and it's just this, this the limpest handshake you've ever, you've ever uh, <laughs> encountered in your life. Or maybe you need a second opinion. Moon, you have uh, some uh, healing arts, right? You could maybe look at that cough or something. Yes, I, I do usually like my... Um, patience to want to accept healing though for reference divinators are more like pastors oh oh i totally am a I, I thought she had healing also <laughs> nope <laughs> I, 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 I i got the sense you maybe didn't have healing but i anyways i was just, i i was being I, uh obtuse on purpose <laughs> I actually thought she did have healing. <laughs> if you all want, if any of you want to make a medicine check, you certainly can. <laughs> See what the heck is going on. I am super curious, so I totally would. Um, all right. So what is the difficulty? The difficulty. This is a. Um, I'm going to say this is an average medicine check, but you're going to take two black dice because this uh, this fella has his face and his mouth covered. Okay, so two... It's two purples and uh, two black dice. Uh, so what happens... Oh, no, that is not a social skill. Never mind, because I have a cool thing where I don't take... I take one less black dice because of my clothes. Yes, this is not a social skill. Uh, it did weird things. Alrighty, that is... Um, so, medicine checks scale with intellect, and then... Mm-hmm. So let's figure out what your ranks in... in what your um, level of intellect is. Um, you have one, one intellect. Um, mm-hmm. And no... Rehan, Rehan kind of skipped school. Um, <laughs> so you... You rolled a wash. Um... You had you rolled one advantage and one threat, and that was a wash. So you get you get nothing. <laughs> he has a this fella has a cold, um, persistent cold. What else? And, uh, and uh, to be frank, there are not a lot of Ikramancers in Ashanda, um, a land that worships the sun as opposed to the sea. So uh, you're not really sure what this fella's deal is, or even why this is weird. Gods, they do anyway. things. <clears throat> anyway, um, you had a uh, got a shipment to take. Yep, we're here for the pickup. All right, all right. Um, come with me. And he uh, gestures to the three of you to um to behind his desk in this. In this place that's clearly abandoned, but also weirdly clean. Um, like you could, like the place looks suspicious, 
But also you get the sense that someone could do surgery here and be fine. Reminds me of my reminds me of my home. Um so are the three of you behind the desk now? Yep. Yeah. All right. Um so the moray, he um he wheels over um two big crates like the size of um like I would say like the, the kind of thing where you would have to carry it like like about a twice as wide as like a good tomato crate. Just okay. of very, very beat up um cedar. And he says, um, all right, this this is the shipment here. And he um opens the the lid of the first of the two boxes and you just see vials and vials and vials of purplish crimson blood. Little single serving vials. Um, this is the helic blood. Um, it is blood um, you know, taken from you know the, the arms of donate often by everyday people. And through the work of a little bit of a a little bit of magic, a few runes, a few um, alchemical processes. And all of a sudden, this mundane blood taken from healthy individuals, taken, of course, this is an ethical process. Um, and all of a sudden, imbibing this blood will heal you. Um, if it sounds horrifying and scary, it is. But... Uh, in New Braemar, Ickermancers are professionals. They're your family doctor in many cases. But uh, in winter upon the scene where you're going, um, in the uh, in the Puranic holdings of Barlany, such work is considered foul by those who rule, but considered useful by the people who live their everyday lives and who every once in a while need patching up from everyday violence of life or from strange illnesses. And he closes up this little these boxes and says, all right. Anything else you need? <clears throat> and he uh, turns to, to the three of you. You can see on Rehan's face, she's waiting for one more thing to do prior to leaving, but we'll do it last. <laughs> do uh, you say... Oh, God. Han Hannah is is ready to go. Like, she, like, looked around suspiciously and, uh, and then eyes the, the crate. Yosef just goes over and just Picks, picks one up, sees how heavy it is. For, for most people, it would be quite a heavy box. Uh, but uh, for, for a fella as tough as Yusuf, it's nothing. You can carry both of these if you wanted to. One on each shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> you can't... You can't quite see the Moray's eyes, but you can see... Oh, no! Be, be, be careful! <sighs> Don't drop that. That's easily... Hundreds of crowns. Like, don't, 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 don't drop it. Don't drop it. It's a still pose of Yosef just like... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> It's okay, Yusuf's a professional. <laughs> the yes. Moray is somehow both coughing and hyperventilating. <laughs> I, I, I think, think you know. should take some medicine for that. Uh, how, how about I sing you a very calming song? 
When the moon is up high and your cough is denied, that's amore. Oh, yeah. and, I, and I leave. <laughs> My husband was already leaving us and he started singing. He's like, nope, not. not. <laughs> he, as, as, as the three of you walk away, Rayhan singing just this incredibly frustrating melody. You... <laughs> If anyone is looking at this at this poor fella in a cloak and a hood, he's just <sighs> face this upon his desk. <laughs> this is not the first time. And he was sick of your shit. He was sick of your nonsense the first time. Um and uh he is no less sick of it the third time. <laughs> <laughs> And thus, um, the three of you start carrying these incredibly va- this incredibly valuable shipment over to Yusuf's boat. The summer uh, lilac. Yusuf, tell me a little bit about the summer lilac. Yeah. Um, so it was named after my then boyfriend and his little pet name. Uh, I don't. He also doesn't speak to this said ex-boyfriend anymore. But uh, once you name a ship, you really aren't supposed to rename it. So he's kind of stuck with it. Um, the ship itself is a little battered when when Yosef bought it originally. But he pretty much spent all his money to fixing it up. So like it has new woods, fresh cells, repaired rope. And it looks pretty decent. looks pretty pretty. Pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty. You know, just it looks good. <laughs> um for those in chat um Yusuf basically took like a like a, a used boat and hot rodded it is what's going on here I pimped my ride <laughs> yes yo dog you say- I heard you like <laughs> I heard you like sails and his boots and stuff <laughs> one could say that you uh you did an exhibit upon this here boat um Make you lose your mind up in here. Oh, oh, oh that's right, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and this boat here is um, is uh, is a, what's called a cutter. So it's got a big sail in the middle, and it's got a little small sail up front. Uh, I believe it's called a jib sail. Um, this type of boat is fantastic if you're going upwind. It's halfway decent if you're. No, it's very good going downwind. It's halfway decent going upwind. Uh, and it is very good at maneuvering. But it's a little more complicated than an equivalent cat boat or, or a sloop. So that's your ship. Um, and then the three of you uh, loaded in, or rather. Does that, did anyone help Yusuf? I help. Mainly I'm, making sure to catch anything Yusuf may and may drop because you know Ray be nimble, Ray be quick. <laughs> <laughs> Ray catches all those falling vials. <laughs> <laughs> Ray does not jump over a candlestick. <laughs> yeah, H- Hannah kind of like nudges at one crate. Um, like I don't know about this, and then like as at the at the very end when there's only like one crate left to do then she like lifts that up and and only does the one crate <laughs> <laughs> so basically you're letting you do all the work <laughs> mm-hmm. i mean hey he he looks like he's doing really well right now he's surfing more than he's surfing <laughs> I mean, like, sun's not out, but I got my guns out. Okay, like, you know. right? Oh, those are good guns. Hey, yeah. welcome to the gun I, show on the I boat show. Ready. H- <laughs> Hannah is very happy to let him flex. <laughs> Just mm. <laughs> <laughs> um. And thus, um, your ship is loaded. Um, and I have a question for you. Um, you have, um, you have, uh, contraband equivalent to 10 encumbrance. 
Um, where do you put that? In the ship. Um, where are things go in a ship? <laughs> I don't know boat stuff. Um, you have you have a cargo hold. Yeah, uh, um, ship, but probably there's a, there's a nice little. Maybe in the hidden encumbrance. Come again. Maybe in like my cabin, just to make sure it's safe because it's it's a uh, these are fragile boys, and like I want to keep make sure that they're yeah. nice and protected. I, I mentioned this because uh, the summer lilac has a very interesting um, upgrade uh, that's a uh, hidden compartments. Yeah, I was probably gonna do uh, that honestly, <laughs> <laughs> just in case uh, that we get stopped. Like you know, yeah. Um, it's gonna be yeah. It's gonna be like in like. So I have like the floorboard and then like I like underneath like a carpet, there's like a little like like plank of wood that's sort of like loose that I could just pull up and put them in there. And uh that plank of wood's actually quite wide, because you can fit these entire crates in here just one by one by one. Almost as if the uh the encarp the uh compartment was made for these particular boxes. Look, I'm not gonna say they weren't. Or they were, but like if it, the shoe fits, like you know, I'm not gonna be mad. <laughs> and with that, um, any any last minute preparations before uh, you three set sail for Windsor upon the sea? I'm just going to um, do the usual ship checks, like make sure the sails look good. Um, my boat hasn't sprung any leaks. Um, the steering wheel thingies movable. Right. I don't, I don't know ship terms. <laughs> <laughs> I can do one of these. <laughs> Wonderful. Let's let's run these checks by doing. Um, oh, oh no. Let's do an average sailing check. This will account for both you checking your ship, and also for uh, plotting a good course. So do I put anything on mods? Um, I'm going to say uh, one black die because it's still a little muggy. So a little bit rainy. Is it just like one BLK? Is that right? Or One BLK. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's see how this works. That's not a B. Okay. Okay. Um, Can I assist in any way? Uh, you, that's you know a good stuff? question. If you... If you have a sailing skill, um, you can do a skill desist. But if not, then you can just give a blue dice to like be helpful. Like she points out, you know, hey, um, tie that rope around or something like that. I have piloting. I don't have sailing. And- there is no piloting. I think that's a different skill. Okay. Um, uh, so- Sailing. I do not see it in my other thing either. It's so. one of my custom skills. So. I think, yeah, I think yes. is the only one who has it. Yeah, well, if I can mm. assist, I will. Otherwise, I will just sort of go dancing around the ship. Practicing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, in that case... Those cut um, spins and sort of turns and also using my cane to sort of be like, ha, ooh, he, there, take <laughs> that, dummy. <laughs> okay. And All right. Like, um, a, a, a rigging or like a ship, like sort of like, on guard, you don't hurt my baby. <laughs> uh, well, Ray is being... Um, uh, a, a bit of a silly goose. Um, um, Morgan, let's roll that um, average sailing check with one black die. Um, one black so I'm going to walk you through running that uh, check. Um, that's, those are successes, and that is an advantage? Yes, that is three successes and an advantage. All right. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> What does that mean? This is a uh, this is the, uh, the the key party trick of Genesis. So, not only in Genesis, not only do you um, account for successes and failures, you also account for advantages and threats, which are like um, little extras that you can kind of put in here and there. An advantage is like a, 
a fun little fortuity that helps you in a way that you didn't expect. And a threat is, uh, is an unintentional consequence that uh, didn't that, that complicates whatever you do next. You just got an advantage as well as your flying success. You are a natural at this. Um, what could the advantage be, do you think? A light advantage. Any ideas? Um, I realize that the wind is good, so we should be leaving now. I like that. You get you get to make extra time. You gotta you get to be there a little a little early. A little bit of time to prepare. I'm just but, like, we gotta go now. And he just like starts unraveling from the, the dock and like <laughs> finishing off quickly. A <laughs> <laughs> bounty safe from emails, that's what he's doing. He's like, nope, gotta go now. <laughs> <laughs> and thus, um, the three of you set sail on the summer lilac on route four. Uh, winter upon the sea. I want to give a shout out to Flounder of the Twelve. Is this a sub? I think this is a sub. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to give a shout out um, for, to Flounder on the of the Twelve. Uh, you are awesome. Um. Uh, yes, so, let's, uh, let's have you three chat a little bit while you're on sale, because this might take a, let's, this might take a, let's say, a day, day and a half to get there. Um, so I want to hear the three of you tell a few stories. Um, let's start with the moon. Moon, tell, <laughs> as the three, as you're all exchanging stories and, you know, making merry, uh, tell us a story in character if you would like about about a fight that you either broke up or ended in an expeditious manner. Hmm. Um. Well, so back in her hometown uh, before. Um, she was kind of disillusioned uh, by uh, life, basically. Um, Moon was actually pretty peaceful. She was um, she was a divinator, and she uh, was a pastor, and she had kind of a a, a really nice. Um, nice sized uh, flock, if you will. Um, but it was one where she knew everybody. And then there was a time when a stranger came to her hometown and he, he seemed nice at first. He, he made friends with the mayor and uh, he was dating one of the local girls um, but it also seemed that he sort of fomented, um, like distrust amongst some of Hannah's flock. Um, and so one day this sort of culminated in two neighbors who had been best friends for a very long time, um, exploding on each other and, uh, one of the neighbors who had been chopping wood swung his axe at the other neighbor and uh, Moon had to step in and protect um, the the neighbor who was in danger of getting axed. Um, this was the first time that she like really used her power in anger instead of um, in peace and joy. And the, the fight did get broken up um, and she confiscated the ax. That's actually one of her weapons now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a story within a story. Uh, but um, yeah, it, it, was, it was the beginning of, of her getting sort of angry at, at outsiders and other people who, um, sought to kind of destroy and, and ruin people's happiness. 
So you go around asking people questions? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a good one. <laughs> does Ray, does Ray sing that in character? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. Like I'm listening intently and you expect some sort of a, like emotional response of like, oh wow, or something, but nope, that's all Ray says. So you go around <laughs> asking people questions. <laughs> And Hannah like gives him a hard look with like this stink eye. <laughs> and I just sort of duck under the table. <laughs> <laughs> what is Yusuf doing when he's listening to the story? Is he, he listening? He, he's listening. He just gives an odd approval like Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> he's a man of little words because he's not good with words. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, the next story told um, Yusuf, uh, what do you tell the crew about a story where. Um, where where you did something really, really impulsive and and had someone else take the consequences for it. Mm. Done something really impulsive and had to take the consequences. Oh, someone else had to take the consequences for it. Okay. Someone else took the fall. Yeah. Mm. So when I was still fishing because that's what we did. We, I thought, you know, we just weren't making enough during that time. And so I decided that it, we could try to like sabotage and um, pick up other people's like fishing nets and see if we can get some extra fish that day. Uh, we did, and it worked for about a, about a week, and, um, yeah, uh, we eventually got caught, but since it was my uncle's ship, he, he took, he took the fall, and I wasn't going to step in and take it for him I should have hindsight but and all but I didn't did your uncle know it was you I was the one who proposed the idea so yeah hmm. so you called uncle <laughs> <laughs> is this how the whole trip is gonna be <laughs> i think i think joseph just like throws like the piece of fruit that he was eating at right <laughs> I, I catch it with my mouth or try to <laughs> hannah like rolls uh, her eyes and she takes like a really long drink from her beer <laughs> all right on that um, Reha, you're gonna have to make a um, I'm gonna say you have to make a daunting coordination check. Uh, um, so you're gonna catch something in your mouth <laughs> being flung at you. Sure, <laughs> no, 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 make it make it a daunting check upgraded once. So take one of your four purple dice and make it a red one. Okay, so it's three black and one red. Yes, and I want to shout out Nerdlopedia for uh, for hosting our stream. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I also want to uh, shout out uh, E.M. Kansen. Uh, it's good seeing you here. So um, it did? Sweet dreams. The black I think, I think it's possible we just got disconnected. It's still My Twitch says there's a network error. 
Mine's, mine's still running. Oh, so yes. It's still okay. Running. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Um, uh, so it didn't roll, somehow it didn't roll the black dice. Three purples. Oh. Uh, yeah, three purple. No wonder. Uh, okay, so um, do I just roll the whole thing again? Yes, please. Huh, still didn't do that. Hmm. Oh, is there a space? Yeah, you should. Yeah. There we go. All Ooh. right. So I was doing so well earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like your luck has run out, Ray Han. <laughs> Just Three like failures and one advantage. <laughs> what does that so, look like? I would say it um I would say the fruit sort of like goes towards me and I miscalculate and it instead like hits me square in the eye and I'm just like blinded for like a couple of moments, but then I just like stick my tongue out and I just finish eating the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> that you took a hard enough hit that I'm going to say um, I'm going to say you took two strain <laughs> from getting sure. clocked uh, sure. in the head, in the face um, with a kind of salty hand fruit. Um, so take two strain <laughs> for that. Sorry, um, I don't know my own strength sometimes. <laughs> No, you knew your strength. <laughs> you were aiming for her head. <laughs> and you got the head. <laughs> I think you need the eye hole, though. Like, I meant to get, like, the cheek or the forehead. <laughs> and I have a black eye because of fruit. <laughs> a black eye will show up tomorrow. Oh. Just a little red and tender right now. Yeah. Or, yeah, like, a, like it's definitely something hit me in the eye. Um. <laughs> He's not <And> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I spend the rest of the trip being like, ah, this was like, like, totally hamming up the whole, uh, this was totally for something really cool I did. Not that I missed a fruit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, kind of on that, um, Rehan, while you're giving that whole spiel about, you know, that was totally intentional, of course. Yeah. Of course it was intentional. Who do you think I am? Um, tell us um, a story about your past that is... Tell us a story about about your home in Ishanda that is clearly bullshit, but almost too awesome to not disbelieve. Okay. So on our estate, uh, growing up, um, I basically, you know, being a wealthy uh, girl, uh, a wealthy girl from like a very wealthy family uh, where my power lies in the ability of making good marriage alliances and sort of bringing more wealth to the family that way. Uh, I was not ladylike whatsoever. And in fact, um, I got the somewhat, I thought it was really cool, but my family apparently didn't, uh, the fruit bandit, uh, <laughs> because I would, the thing is, as, as part of the family, I could have gone to the orchards and grabbed the fruit whenever I wanted. No one would stop me, but I preferred stealing it. And almost like I, I, the only time I would enjoy eating it is if it were stolen. So uh, as a child, I would start by doing the whole under the table thing where I was really small and nimble. And if people were eating first, they didn't see me. Then two, my hands would slowly come up from under the table and then suddenly fruit has disappeared. Um, and uh, my family is like, 
wait, what happened to the what happened to this piece of fruit I was going to eat? And it's like, well, dad or mom, I saw you eat that. So clearly you really need to need some more coffee or tea because clearly you've, you're forgetting how much fruit you've had. And then they'd get another piece of fruit and I would do it again and again. <laughs> and that's how I practiced my, uh, my skills. And then um, I go into, this is now getting into BS category of how I would um, sort of Errol Flynn-like sort of go from one place to another, swinging from orchard to orchard, grabbing all the fruits and eating it victoriously away from the uh, the vile hands of the groundskeepers, the bane of groundskeepers. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, by the way, I want to shout out uh, Variant Roles and Works of Mischief for uh, hosting us here stream. Thank you very, very much. Um, Hannah, Yusuf, how much of this bunk do you buy? I mean, I feel like at this point, like Hannah is only going to believe half of what Ray says anyway. Um, <laughs> so in this, since this is a story, she now only believes a quarter of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I think it's, it's the, the part that where she came from a wealthy family. That's that's like what Hannah believes. Like, okay, I I, I believe that. <laughs> and that, my friends, is how I went from a comptor to an armchair. And you understand that as sort of like a comptor basically is someone who is lazy, and armchair is like a mango stealer. <laughs> Okay. Did I break the G? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> My God. All right. <laughs> you monster. <laughs> I'm in a mood today. <laughs> Seems so. <laughs> He also doesn't buy any of it, but he's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Hurst. Yep. Mm -hmm. He just kind of goes along with the story, but doesn't buy any of it. <laughs> 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 All right. And with that, um, the three of you get to um, the, uh, the royal port of uh, Windsor upon the Sea. Um, and this is where things get a little interesting. All right. So we're going to talk about fate. Fate is a little uh, little system that we have in this setting um, where we see whether... Because everyone has a fate. They spend enough time on the sea. The song of the gods twists your future in certain ways that you can either embrace or run away from, but you cannot exactly... You cannot easily change. So with that, I want all of you to roll a D100 and compare it to the value you have on your character sheet for fate. If a D100 roll is below your fate, we'll have to tell we'll have to tell the chat what your uh, what your fate is. How do you how do you roll a D100? Uh, on roll 20 it should just be um, slash roll D100, right? Yeah, I think so. Mhm. Mm uh it is under my value. Oh, nope, that's not it. Um, slash roll D100, is that right? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Slash roll space D100. Oh, there's going to be a space. That is over All right. mine. All right, so it seems like... Um, mine we're is going under. To Mine's oh under. God. Um, which means we are going to um, that the uh, the gods call upon the fates of Rehan and uh, Moon. Rehan, uh, tell me 
about your vision of glory and your vision of doom. Uh, okay. So my vision of glory is I know when danger approaches and my vision of doom is people are in, inclined to distrust me. Um, so I think it's vision of glory inside and vision of doom, Cassandra. All righty. And then Moon, tell me your vision of glory and your vision of doom. My vision of glory is... Um, Uh, temerity. Hmm. So. You there? I got it. I, yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I got to get the, uh. <laughs> so once, uh, once per session, I can flip a story point to do something impulsive without facing consequences. Um, and then <laughs> a vision of doom. Sorry, my internet is squirming with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, uh, vision of doom. Agitation. Uh, moon never really relaxes. She receives plus KK. I don't know what two that black is. Dice. Okay. Two, two black two dice black. to cool checks. And checks are, oh, okay. That's cool. So she's basically just like neurotic, which... I can definitely play because that's me in real life. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I mean, not even neurotic, but also just like hothead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it is actually quite like me in real life. I don't think I'll have that much trouble. <laughs> and uh, while we're at it, I am going to um, set some story points. So for the chat, um, story points in Genesis um, are basically a mechanic for invoking deus ex machinas um, on the fly. Um, uh, a player can flip a story point to upgrade a check, so they'll turn a green to a yellow. Um, to make you know, the check work even a little better um, and get a chance at a triumph, which is a critical success. Or you can flip a story point to, um, you know, have a fortuitous escape rope just show up. Or um, if you need to climb a building, flip a story point to say, good thing I packed a rope. Um, so you can <laughs> kind of do what you like with that. And I, as a GM, can flip a story point over to the player's side to... Um, Raise the stakes in interesting ways. All of a sudden, I can flip a story point to have the, the sky open up to rain. Or flip a story point to uh, upgrade the difficulty of a check. So turn a purple to a red, opening you up to the chance of a despair, which is your critical failure. I can do a couple things to really mess with you. And every player story point that's flipped becomes a GM story point that I can flip. And that every GM story point I flip becomes one that a player can flip. So it goes back and forth. So I'm going to say we start with uh, two player story points, and two GM story points. Um, so that way we can really get into the interesting stuff. Um, yeah, Rule 20 does story points weird. We'll, 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 we'll do this the analog way for now, I think. <laughs> um, Need me to tell my vision stuff or no? Sure, let's tell it for the chat. Okay. Well, um, shoot, now I gotta get back to that page one second. <laughs> I was reading things. Um, so Yosef's is Ooh, passed up. Where is it? Oh, Vision of Glory is uh you may never been here, but you know where you're going. And Vision of Doom is if something goes badly, you are the first to be blamed. Mm. Ooh, dear. Yeah. But uh, you, not, you rolled above your fate value, so uh, the gods have not 
called upon your future today. Okay. Okay. So you are free for now. Um, so we get to the port and you are waved on a board or waved up to a dock and you were greeted by uh, two guards um, who both are carrying um, they're both carrying uh, simple pole arms uh, rather like long like military grade spears mm-hmm. and they're wearing the um, the bright orange coats um, that are uh, that are uh, the known flag color of the Puranic holdings of Barlamy, um, a sun worshiping rising empire that you know, technically presides over New Braemar, but uh, the place is kind of a backwater. No one cares. So, you know, they kind of let New Braemar do what they want. But um, this is winter upon the sea. This is one of their largest trade ports. Um, so customs enforcement is a little hotter. Um, the moray gave you some paperwork. So um, along with your crates of um, healing blood, you have a couple crates of, you know, grain. You know, grain and bread. Not really bread, but grain, um, like hardtack, uh, fish, you know. Above ground stuff. Mm-hmm. Just so that, you know, they don't look too close. Um, and uh, you were advised to seek out um, a guard named Vendrick um, under the assumption that Vendrick um, is expecting you and, uh, and that uh, if you give him a nice little bribe of, I don't know, Hundred crowns, which you know you have, you can give him that. Uh, he will um, will give you a light custom search, which should make things easier for you. Um, but you realize as you uh, as you um, as you tie yourself to the to a dock, you do not know which person coming up to you is Vendrick. Or if, in fact, any of them are, either of them are Vendrick. What do the three of you do? I put on my charm face of, like, I'm, we, I am totally in charge of this and I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, <clears throat> look sharp, friends. And that sort of, I got this <laughs> way. And I say, um, hello, uh, is Vendrick here? It's been so long since I've seen them. Hmm. Um. Last I saw them, they were only yee high, and now... They must be so... Do I know if Vendrick's uh, male, female, or... Vendrick is one of the guards. Um, I'm going to say... Uh, Vendrick uses she, her pronouns. She, her. Like, the last I saw her, she was in big deals, and now she must be so, so grown up, and so... Um, so... Such a wonderful young lady. Serving um, her down so well. All right. Um, the question: How old does Rehan look? Um, probably twenties. All right. Um, in that case, I'm going to have you roll a. Uh, a hard deception check. Upgraded once. Uh, well, actually, no. I'm going to make it a daunting deception check. Um, upgraded once. I also, uh, to add to that, I have my bureaucrat's garb, which is uh, removes one black to charm leadership and negotiate. Oh, I guess that doesn't really work. <laughs> okay, yes. 
so deception and it is a daunting, so that would be four purple dice, but you've upgraded it, so three purple and one black. One red. One red, okay. This is fine. It's good. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is great. That's a triumph. Yeah. That's really good. But do threats. I think I know what that triumph is. Okay. There... I potentially you aren't even lying you really do know Vendrick you really have known them since they were a kid um, or at least you've known them since that you were both teenagers kind of ducking around um, around Barlany so indeed Vendrick is a childhood friend of yours maybe how's that sound yeah that sounds good but since I ran away from home, I have I have no idea what they look like anymore. Hmm. Well, perhaps you've yeah. Because I think Vendrick is from Barlany, and you're not from here. You kind of came here like several years ago. Yeah. But yeah, you haven't seen her in forever, so you can't pick her out in a crowd. Um. The, the two guards kind of turn to each other and say, uh, Vendrick, is, is, she, is she among our, one of ours? Hmm. Uh, she said she would meet me on the dock when I arrived and give me a warm welcome. Um, I don't see her or her warm welcome. Hmm. <clears throat> I'm how about this? I'm going to uh, flip a GM story point and uh, say, uh, yeah, um, hmm. who should I say? Who should I say uh, is looking for? Her friend, her, her, her childhood friend, Ray. All Ray. Right. The guard looks annoyed and she, uh, all right. Um, one of them says, uh, all right, I'll, 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 uh, Aiken, can you handle it? And then, um, the other, the other guard who's, whose name's Aiken apparently says, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll handle them. Um, and then, uh, the first guard says, uh, all right, uh, I will, I will go find Vendrick. And then Aiken here <clears throat> will, uh, We'll, we'll search your, uh, we'll handle the custom stuff for you while you're, while we're at it. So, um, Ray Ray's gonna show, um, or your, Vendrick is gonna show in a little bit, but in the interim, someone's gonna have to, uh, handle customs enforcement. I can do, you do it, but if some, if either of you want to... Um, I'm not good at talking to people. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> um, I say, uh, yes, yes, here's the documentation. And I really take my sweet time sort of digging through various sheets of paper, even though I know exactly where it is, trying to pull that <laughs> up. Buy me time. Buy us time. All right. Um... Does anyone else want to help? Um, want to help Ray here? Yeah, I think I want to um, help too. Uh, I'm gonna jump in and say, "Is is there a problem here? We we were kind of told that uh, all we had to do was sh show up and." There's supposed to be somebody meeting us here. Uh, well, everyone's meeting someone. It's, you know, it's customs enforcement. Um, you know, and uh, 
I mean, you know, things are going a little war. Things are getting a little heated up. You know, we got a we got a war we're prepping for. Or, well, it's not really a war, but you know. The, I stopped like, searching. It's like war. What sort of a war? Um, and Aiken looks dead at you, the uh, the Ashanban, um, and says, "You of all people should know." And um, I think you would know um, if you've been paying attention to the politics of the world. You see, Ishanda, the Ishandan Empire is the preeminent power of the Central Sea. Um, they, they are the most powerful empire in the area, and Ishandan trade ships kind of rule the sea. But now, Barlini in the wake of other wars winding down to the east and to the west of Barlany, they're seeing an opportunity to start taking in, sniping at us, the Michelin's and traders, trying to take control of the sea a little bit. So there's a bit of a cold war mounting, and we're about one snap away from it turning into perhaps one of the grisliest naval wars this world has ever seen. Um, and you, Ray, would know this. Oh, I'm totally like blink, blink, doe eye, like, oh, what sort of a war? And when it's like, you should know, because it's in your, like, sort of hinting at me being a shaman, it's like, what? Just because I like the clothes and I look like them doesn't mean I know anything about them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not searching through my papers like any it, it's only if, if uh, uh, he or she or they ask me I will continue searching but I'm basically finding any excuse to delay this until Vendrick shows up oh, yeah no. I'm gonna, I think Moon is going to step in I mean, gentle people gentle people I understand you have a job to do we're we're all just trying to do our jobs here, you know. We're all just cogs on a wheel, uh, trying to get through the day. Make sure we have food in our belly, a little coin in our pocket, you know. You kiss the husband or the wife when you come home, and and that's that's all it is. We're just trying to get through the day, and I totally understand that uh, this is your job here, but. You know, we don't want to make this hard on you. What What do we need to do? What do we all need to do to just move this along? I'm going to ask you to roll a hard charm check. Okay. Uh, upgraded once. Okay. Can I help with the charm? How many ranks do you have in charm? One. Oh, yeah, do. I think. Yeah. Okay. I don't have no, anything to charm, but can I like flex in the background as I'm, like pulling down ropes to distract? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Eye candy in the background. Yeah. Um, I, I think um, Ray can add a, a blue dye to your charm okay. check. Um, I don't know if, if, uh, I mean, if Yusuf wants to try the, uh, the hunk, the hunk approach. Um. <laughs> Look, he's just working. It's not his fault that he looks good doing it. Like you, you should, know. It, you you know, you gotta like loosen your collar and just, then like bring up the bottom of your shirt, show off your abs. Like he's wiping the like, sweat from his forehead with his mom and shirt. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> In fairness, I don't know if uh, scales and gills and a few extra teeth is quite the type for. <laughs> you don't know their life. They might like it. You never know. Different strokes, different strokes, I guess. Um, <laughs> well, flip the story point. You can have that actually be the thing. <laughs> oh, I know because Joseph can't talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, you can you can roll that check uh, at a blue because uh, Ray is. Okay. Sort of running interference. I tried that. That rolled. That rolled. Ooh. 
Ooh. Um, that's a good roll. So you definitely. So, hmm. What? So you, what was the question again? That, that, uh, the hell oh, I, that? I said, what, what can we all do to just move this along? Um, and, uh, and this, and, the, and Aiken says, um, well, I just need, I just need to, you know, um, look through the manifest, look through your ship, make sure everything matches up, you know, like, you know, pop open a couple of crates, make sure, you know, nothing's gotten like, you know, smuggled in, you know what I mean? Uh, just, just all the time. There's so much contraband coming in these ports now. It's. It's it's kind of hard to kind of keep up with all of it at this point, um, and um, I I have an idea of what these three advantages would do if you if you want to. Uh -huh. Um. Yeah. I'll, if you have an idea, I think you get Aiken going on such a tangent about smuggling mm -hmm. that it just takes him forever. To just like talk about over and over and over. Um. Mm -hmm. I feel like just Ray and Hannah are just like nodding along, like, tell me more. <laughs> tell me yeah. more. <laughs> and, and, he, and he saw me sort of in the middle of about to do a bend and snap sort of a thing, just doing <laughs> And then I just stopped because, like, oh, okay, I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> um,. And I think with three advantages, I think you can like keep, you, you. You don't get him to like do what you want exactly, but he talks so much that I think Vendrick actually shows. Okay. Um, yeah, and, Hannah. Hannah is nodding. She looks so engaged. She's got like a half smile on her face, and like. Um, like her eyes are like locked on him. She's like making eye contact, like yeah, and encouraging him to keep talking, keep talking. I, I mean, I, I tell you, there, there's it's just it's an absolute nightmare, and it's and it's all this. This is the problem. What we need is we need uh, we need more customs enforcement happening out there. You know, we're in that like out out in like Revic. Because I am frankly tired of all these fish people trying to smuggle in goods. I swear to God. Um, and I just look back at Yusuf at this point, and I'm like, <laughs> "Cool, keep cool." <laughs> and I turn back. Yusuf's not paying attention. He's too busy, like you know, prepping the dock to be docked. So like, he's just like doing all the ship precautions of like sit, not not like full cells and like all that stuff. So he's oblivious to what's going on with conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i feel like hannah is like trying really hard not to look back at yusef like her her shoulders are like really tense and she's like oh god no he mentioned his people <laughs> should someone roll cool for this i feel like someone should roll cool I can roll a cool or Hannah. Um, I'll roll cool. Eh, we'll, we'll leave it. I don't want to. Okay. Um, but <laughs> at that point, um, you hear, um, you hear uh, a Barlin guard just kind of yell, "Well, if it isn't my favorite criminal." Um. And uh, Vendrick, uh, a similarly young woman, in a, uh, in, a, in the uh, in the guard's garb, it, it's a bit too big on her. Like you can tell, she got it from like another officer. But um, this person kind of sort of recognizes Ray, um, and just is that you? That can't be. Ah, my chuddy buddy is here. 
Please don't call me that. I still don't know what the heck you mean by that, but please don't call me that. Well, you know, we wear chuddies and I point to basically my underwear. Um, and we're buddies. So, like, we've been buddies since we walked around in our chuddies. So, like, you know, we're chuddy buddies. How many times do I have to explain that? And I go and I try to give a warm embrace and sort of like almost half relief, sort of a hug. <laughs> <laughs> and like, <laughs> she's like, you know, we, we, we met when we were 15, uh, but <laughs> it's just good seeing you again. How are things? And uh, who are your friends here? Ah, this is Moon. Moon. Vendrick. It's like a little weave. And that over there, that that uh, hunk over there is Yusuf, captain of the summer lilac that we have currently come on. Um, as you know, I've been waiting to meet you so after such a long time, my friend. And I sort of give like another hug, but this time slip the hundred in, the hundred crowns in their pocket. <laughs> Uh, okay, okay, um, this is where things got a little spicy, huh? I will use uh, a story point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so you're gonna have to make a skullduggery check versus, um, versus, uh, two purples and one red. Okay, and what does a story, like, using a story point... That upgrades a check of yours, so you can turn a green into a yellow. Okay, so how do I upgrade um, with the roll? Um, just just roll as you would, but instead of doing like I believe your normal um, your normal roll would be um, three greens and one yellow, it can now yeah. just be two greens and two yellows. Okay, so I think I'll probably do... Let me see if I can actually roll with... Um, so... And then what was the check difficulty? Um, two purples and one red. Oh, no, that doesn't do anything. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so... Uh, so you could you could use the dice pool at the top. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what I'll do. Uh, okay, so ha! So one. Two. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. That's what I was looking for. So I misjudge where the pocket is, and when I slip it, it actually falls to the ground with a very an uh, audible thud and jingle as my failure. <laughs> um. And what are your two advantages, do you think? Um, can I perhaps sort of, uh, as as I hug uh, and miss, and it's this, this very audible thing, I was like, oh, I dropped that, my bad, and I pick it up. But it's very clear that some bag of coin was going to be dropped in a pocket, but I missed it literally, like, by a couple of centimeters. Ha <laughs> <laughs> um, So we're at two... We're at two GM points and two player points for story points. Um, Vendrick... I think Vendrick... You can see the look of oh crap in her eyes because she knows what you were doing. Um, she was told to expect a ship that looks very similar to Yusef's, but 
you made the shocking error of trying to slipper a bribe in full view of another guardsman. Um, and then on top of that, to flub it, um, that uh, she has to basically be like, she says to you, are you trying to bribe a Barlin guard? Are you really trying to do that? No, I was holding it in my hand and it slipped. Uh, this is totally my coin. And while hugging you, I completely missed. I shouldn't. I should have made sure I put my money away before I hugged you. It's totally not what you think it is. You know, when you're so excited to see your friend, you just want to <laughs> hug them regardless of what you're doing without maybe putting things away before you should hug them. <laughs> the other guard <laughs> looks at Vendrick and and he's just like, what? 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 What's going on here? Um, and 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 Vendrick just goes, um, well, uh, well, I don't know what's going on here. And she's just staring daggers at you um, the, whole, the whole time, Ray. Um, papers. And, here. Here's my papers. Uh, I found it. Um, all right. And now these two fellas... Um, Aiken has smelled rat, and what he's going to do is he's going to check, um, he's going to check your cargo, um, but he's going to check it with two blue dice, because he's going to check all the, uh, the cubby holes, if he can, that he can find, um, because, uh, something's up! Something is something up. Um, let me see what this fella is going to roll. This fella is going to roll vigilance. And uh, I'm going to say it's going to be a hard check to... Um, I am going to give it uh, a hard check plus two black dice, plus hidden compartments, um, to account for everything and make sure there's nothing fishy going on here. Um, let's make that roll. All right. Let's roll that. Ooh. Ooh. All right, all right. <laughs> so, Aiken doesn't find anything. <laughs> but he's still, he's still going to be a little, he's going to be thinking about. Well, uh, I, don't, I don't see anything around here. There's some creaky boards and all, but I don't know. But I'm, I'm, I'm still worried. Uh, I, I am still worried. I feel, still think, and I'm going to flip a GM story point here. I think we should still do something about the fact this woman here just tried to bribe you. What do you say, Vendrick? Let's, let's, let's. I think we got enough to. Really, really, at least put this, the skinny one, in the clink. What say we do that? And I think there, um, I'm going to wish pause for a break. And then we'll be back very, very soon to see how this, uh, how this uh, plays out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Right. I guess I guess you're gonna have to break me out. 
<laughs> oh, it's going to be a little bit of that. All right.
So I guess make sure audio and everything's working. I think it should. <laughs> uh, we're you know. going. I see the I see the video. I see the video Ooh. too. I see the video too. <laughs> Yo, working. Yay! Yay. All right. Nice. Itchy. Just said that everything's working. Excellent. I just want this thing to sort out. All right. Um, so we have a bit of a bit of a conundrum here, don't Do we? Do I get handled? <laughs> <laughs> Not in the sexy way. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. um so we are going to have to, um, so Vendrick, uh, says, uh, all right, so I don't want to do this, but, uh, you know, it stems the rules. You don't, you don't slip money to guards. Uh, as I said, it was all a misunderstanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you can you can tell that you can tell that to a judge. And um she is going to try and uh try and restrain you. What I do will, you all do? I will do uh, you know, da da din and sort of like dance away. <laughs> all right then. <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, uh, like the whole Kathak, uh, Kathak, you know, dance, like, you know, the, 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 the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> In that case, you are going to have to make a coordination check versus uh, one purple and two reds. Because <laughs> you were going to go against... Uh, Against uh, Vendrick's ball, Vendrick, Wait, Vendrick's ball so skin. Much dice. I shouldn't be having that much dice. <laughs> that is an awful lot of dice. I don't want to fix that. <laughs> that uh, way too many dice. Oh, because all the dice pools are. Uh, it includes the dice pool. Um. Yeah. Oh, that you had up there before. Yeah. Okay. So I'll roll. Okay. Yeah. This is now. Okay. So you. You managed to wriggle your way out. Uh, good job. You are now officially evading uh, what passes for law enforcement in Westminster upon the sea. Panic at the top as I move out of the way. <laughs> All right, then. And I guess now we have to roll some initiative, don't we? Uh, all right, then. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a simple uh, skill check. So there will be no purples, no reds, no blacks. Simply roll a skill and see how many successes you get. Um, Rayhan, you're going to um, make a cool check. Um uh, actually, all three of you will make cool checks, and then the two guards will make vigilance checks okay. to determine an initiative. And uh, Hannah takes two blacks, remember? Oh, that's right. All right. Wait. Did I do it right? I don't know if it did. Uh, yes, you did. Um, also, shout out to, to Epic Logical for uh, joining this here party. Woo! Uh, Hello, welcome. All right, so we got uh, one success from Yousef. Uh, what else do we have for rolls here? I have one success uh, from me. All right, so one success from, ha from, uh, Rayhan. from Rayhan. Yes. Um, and then two successes from Hannah. All right. So I'm going to make two rolls myself. Um, how'd, how'd y'all get that labeled as initiative cool? That's really cool. 
um, under Weapons, Talents, and Powers tab. You um, are much better at this than I am. I run the um, wrong I'm, way, but okay. <laughs> it's not cool. It's okay. I am going to do something else. All right. So, one guard gets two... They both get two successes. Um, so, we get uh, one PC slot. I'll point it to the one PC slot, then two NPC slots, and then two PC slots. That's how it's going to work. Because um, uh, uh, Moon got the jump on these folks. Um, <laughs> Somehow. And, uh, and she, she's focused. Um, and uh, Ray and Yusuf are a little, little, uh, little slow on the uptake. Yosef wasn't paying attention at all, okay? Like, he's <laughs> yeah. he doing his job. <laughs> but now, we get to do... It's time for f- combat. Okay, so we got a PC slot to start up. Uh, who wants to take this PC slot first? I kind of have an idea of what I want Hannah to try. Okay. Um, if, if you guys don't mind. Go ahead. Yeah, go okay. ahead. Um, so I, I want to do some magic. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want, I want to do like a confusion spell to kind of put them off of their you know, like anger and, and kind of make them not want to keep going with this arrest. All right. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to justify that as Mm -hmm. either an augmentation, an attack, a barrier, or um, a dispelling of a spell. So if you can convince me that's an augmentation, an attack, or a barrier, we can make your roll. I think I think it's gonna be an attack, really, because that's what she's like reacting um as if someone who has like a physical weapon would react. So um she's kind of she's like throwing this at them, this spell to to uh get them to stop. Okay, I see. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. You can cast a spell that does stun damage as opposed to wound damage. How's that sound? Yeah, that sounds good. Alrighty, so let me check what kind of difficulty that would be from the almighty book of rules. Um, Alright, so that's going to be, because you're with a short range, you can target one of them. With this okay. attack. Um, I'm going to target the, the dude who, I, I just forgot his name, but the one who kind of started it all that we kept trying to have to convince. Aiken is his name. Aiken. Yep. So that's going to be an average check. Okay. Um, it's, an, it's an average check um, versus this fella. Okay. Um, so what do I use for that? Divinity. That's your magic skill. Okay. Divinity and two purple. That is... That is a double triumph. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, um, <sighs> <that's too laughs> <cool. laughs> that's that's too damn good roll. Um, shit. 
I, I, I can. I can curse on the stream. Oh my word, that is. I. <laughs> no, no. The 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 triumphs count as successes. So um, right. Lily gets two successes. Um, they're also triumphs. Um, I I I think <clears throat> your stun. Um. Oh right, two failures cancels the success. Uh, shout out to Epic Logical for knowing the rules better than uh, better than the game master. <coughs> um. Yeah, so it's not it's not a success, but that triumph still count as something good happening. Um. Hmm. Okay. Because I still feel like you you sing a song so ominous and awe-inspiring. Um, and I'm going to say it shakes Aiken enough to look at Moon and just know that the gig is up and he's just going to bolt. Okay. Uh, um, screaming something about foul dark magics. Not screaming, but like like muttering under his breath about <laughs> you know, the salt witch. Oh my. Oh, by the, by the sun god itself. He just faced a berserker. Of, of the sea and he is not about to mess with that and he just bolts in absolute horror which leaves us with Vendrick um like looking at Ray and this half open bag of coin still on the dock just going what what? Consider it fine money. <sighs> what? <laughs> <laughs> um, and with this, she. Uh, Vendrick just kind of sighs, picks up the money, and says, All right. Take, take your shipments. Well, take your shipments. We'll have, just come with me. Take your stuff. Um, so Stevie Doors come to get all of the, uh, all of all of the all of the legit stuff, and uh, Yusef I think is tasked with um, carrying the. Uh, I think all of the legal stuff is taken in, and then Yusef carries two more of the boxes that suspiciously aren't in the manifest, but you know no one's reading the manifest besides. Uh, Besides Vendrick here, so no one really knows. Um, and as the three of you walk, the Steve doors break left into a warehouse, and you three break right. Um, and, uh, and she says, She, Vendrick looks at Yusuf, who has pretty much been quiet this entire time, right? Like, you haven't said a word. Nope. I know um, better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Vendrick looks at this, frankly, like, as much as Yusuf is a hunk, he is a little bit unnerving to look at if you don't, if you're not familiar with Invernessers. Um, and, uh, and, uh, she, uh, she says, uh, does he speak? Not my pet, you know, completely full fleshed, uh, person. Um, of course, uh, I mean, Yusuf can speak for himself. He just gives a look at her because <laughs> he doesn't, in spite, he doesn't want to speak now. 
<laughs> it's okay. This uh, this guard here won't bite you. She's friendly. <laughs> you could always bite back anyway. <laughs> I mean, hey, what you do in public or in private is completely my business, and I want to have a part in it. <laughs> <laughs> Yusuf just gives a look between the two of them and he's like, yes, I can speak. <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Okay. Um, and um, Vendrick leads you into an alley. And then another alley, left, right, right, left, just deeper and deeper into the streets of Westminster upon the sea. Until you get to another seemingly abandoned building. Um, and, and, uh, and, uh, and Vendrick says, all right, this is your place. I'm going to need a drink. See you later. And she just storms off back to her post. Um, and three of you and at another door. Sweet. We didn't have to pay her. Well, she kind of took the money anyway. So oh, did she really? Oh, dang it. I must have missed that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was it was money you had set aside anyway, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, it was. I just I thought because of the commotion, payment flew off the table, figuratively and literally. But like, <laughs> <laughs> well, that went a lot better than uh, last time. Remember when we basically had to, you know, go park on the other side of this, uh, the other side of this cove and then do everything under, under the moonlight or rather lack of moonlight because it was a moonless night because it was a new moon. And then Yusuf, you had to just carry everything while we just watched. I mean, it was great watching you, but you know. He just looks at the two crates in his arms and just looks at them as he's carrying everything right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just works an eyebrow. We're like, like. <laughs> okay, at least you're doing it in daylight. He <laughs> <laughs> just looks at the sky and just sighs. <laughs> and no, and no commute. We're right here. <laughs> What do you all do with this dear door? Open it? Yeah. Door's locked. You can knock, though. I go. Um, um, I know what you're doing there. Um, but <laughs> another slide opens. Um, and someone else just says, uh, ah, it's you folks. Uh, come on in. And um, and the door opens, and you see a, a mousy-looking lad. So yeah, all right. I guess you got. I guess you got the uh, uh, the liquor, huh? Yeah, we got the liquor. That sounds so suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> The the liquor vitae, so to speak. How did how do you how did how do you how did you three get here without getting arrested? Well, my, my good looks was, and charm. It was close, and I, I'm not sure the good looks and charm actually helped us. Um, okay, Yusuf's good looking, my charms. <laughs> Yusuf just puts on the brow because he had no part of that conversation at all. 
<laughs> okay, Can we hurry this along. I just we we're spending a lot of time. We were supposed to stay under the radar, and this is not how things are supposed to be happening. Agreed. And like Hannah, like folds her arms. Okay, fine. It's Yusuf's good looks and your charm. How's that now? Let, let's just make the trade. Yes. Uh, that, that sounds like a good plan to me. All right. Put the crates here. We'll check them up. We'll, uh, and then, uh, I'll pay you and we'll, we'll pretend we never saw each other again. Okay. We won't, uh, sure. we'll pretend that we haven't seen you in the previous other visits either. Hello, new friend. We totally have not met. Yusuf, what do you do to interrupt Rayhan talking? <laughs> <laughs> I put the crates down gently and I just like put a hand over her mouth and just like sort of just shove her behind me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> as I just move away, it's like, you know, you just hear the sort of murmured kinky as you push me away. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, that's the stuff. Let's get the payment. Um, the um, the uh, this mousy fella just opens up the two boxes, looks at them real quick, and says, "All right, uh, here's your payment." And he gives you a quite hefty bag of coin. Um, coin, of course, because you know paper money is probably not the smartest thing to carry onto a ship. Um, it's quite wet out. Um, Wait, it's not made out of cloth? The the bills aren't, no. Uh, oh. He gives you coins. Yep. Um, and he says, all right, get the hell out of here. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, person I have not met or will never meet again. <laughs> Yosef just shakes his hand and just like sort of just shoves Rayon out. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I just do a bow since I can't talk as I leave, you know, the whole sort of customary like thank you for your patronage bow. <laughs> and as the three of you walk back to the docks. Um, since Yusuf, since, uh, since um, Yusuf mentioned it, um, um, yeah, Morgan, uh, roll a vigilance check. Um, average difficulty. Okay, let's see here. Uh, vigilance. Oh, there it is. Just regular, nothing added. Yeah. Oh, that's a bit. That's pretty good. Uh, you see the bag of coins um, glinting the water underneath. Oh, we got, we, do we got lag? We may have lag. Do we have lag? Are we good? Are no, we good? It's, it's catching I think up. we're okay. Yeah. Good. Thank God. Um, so, Yusuf, you see um, the bag of coin that you think was um, was Vendrix that uh, it seems she had dropped in all the fracas and is now at the bottom of the docks. What do you do? I'm just like, wait here. And he just slips in and just uh, goes to go get it. <laughs> I look at Moon and like Yusuf does this frequently, decides needs to have a a personal fish people me time and goes for a dip. Sure. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> wow, you two are very easily distracted. <laughs> Morgan, uh, does Yusuf take a sweet time underwater? No, he's just in and out. Like, there's no, I mean, he'll like do another look around to see if there's anything else he's missing, but 
past that, he's just going to go over the coins and then come back up. <laughs> he's actually so not going to come up to them. He's going to go like further down. <laughs> so, um, by the time um, Moon makes that comment, uh, Yusef is already at the boat. <laughs> I guess we follow? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's just pulling himself out and like sitting on the dock and then starting to stand up on the dock. <laughs> the it's like, took y'all long enough. <laughs> well, you, know, um, you, you technically said wait here. So we were waiting. He just tosses the coin bag of coins at, at Rayhan. Oh, <laughs> I see your 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 skinny dipping um, yielded some fortuitous results. He just looks at his clothes, but all the clothes are like skinny dipping, right? And he just turns and walks on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Lude. <laughs> And scene. <laughs> Thank that you. was so much fun. That was, that was really, I loved it. <laughs> Still shook at the double triumph roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, I've actually been playing Star Wars for a couple of years now, and I have never gotten double triumph. <laughs> <laughs> you should like it and showed your friends like look i did right? it <laughs> i did it i made the roll <laughs> it does exist uh, i had a i did a stun damage spell so good it just ended someone first try yeah yeah <laughs> all right thank you very much um to uh, to Miriam, to Lily, to Morgan, and um, and to you as well. Thank yes. you. Ah, yeah, thanks, AJ. Or and AJ. also to <laughs> Des, um, AJ. AJ. Oh, first of all, yes. for doing yes. all the behind the scenes tech work and making this whole dang thing work so wonderfully. Like, thanks, this, Jess. This is Thank so you, great. Jess. Um, uh, Jess really rolled a triumph for dealing with uh. The Twitch bandwidth problems, <laughs> right? <laughs> it was so good. Um, thank you very much to everyone in chat as well. To all the folks who um, who are hosted the stream on their own channels, um, this is just absolutely fantastic and. You're all so wonderful. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a wonderful night and, uh, and uh, take care of yourself and uh, make sure that when you are bribing guards to smuggle uh, contraband into a <laughs> seaport, uh, make sure you're alone. <laughs> or maybe just don't use a bag of coins because they're, heavy and easily slip out. Or make sure I slip my hand in the correct pocket first before make putting... a lot of noise. Yeah. <laughs> and you make sure there's not other guards there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you we have a lot of advice for people making bribes. Uh, don't make bribes. Boom. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I'm sure there are reasons for a bribe. Do you want to go around the table just telling people where you can, where we all can be found on the internets and what we're doing? Yes. Plugs. Plugs are good. <laughs> um, Miriam, let's, let's, do, let's, let's start with you. What are your plugs? Uh, well, I'm going to be appearing in another 45 minutes as one of the players for <laughs> Emissaries of Hithna, uh, which is right after the show, as well as, um, I am uh, GMing the Mosafers, of which Ajay is also a player. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and, I, and I'm working on Sir Zameen. And uh, yeah, you can find me on media underscore junkie for more info about all the things I'm doing. Woo! Woo! All right, Morgan. Oh, hey. Hi. Hello. It's me. Um, 
I am on Welcome to the Party every once in a while, like once, twice a month. I'll be running um, a 3V game in a few weeks with some kids on bikes, which I'm excited for. Don't yeah, my first time running it, so uh, I'll be great. It'll be fine. Everything will be a okay. I swear. It'll be awesome. <laughs> um you can find me with um roll to play podcast i'm on a couple other one shots as well um the roll to play podcast network on their one shots as well as the red death 5e um campaign uh you can also find me on victory condition gaming for various one shops as well um and the forbidden lands campaign that's going on currently there um you can find me on twitter and instagram at serena bezos um uh yeah it's good to be here <laughs> <laughs> hi i'm lily and i'm elise on life on twitter uh i used to mainly talk books on my twitter uh but i am interested in um all kinds of speculative fiction i also write um i'm part of uh 3b uh, I'll be actually on um, next week's campaign, and I'm also part of a regular campaign um, called Adventures in Agni, which is hosted here at Welcome Party also, um, and that's at 11.30 p.m. on Saturday nights, uh, Eastern Time. Um, and I am a member of Misfits of Space which is a Star Wars actual play podcast with all femme players. Yeah. Woo! That makes me happy. Um, and yeah, uh, you can find me on my browser quiet Twitter page at Ajay Pandey. Um, you can find me um, on the Most Softers podcast um, hosted by the one, the only Miriam. Um, you can you can uh, watch me as I play the most curmudgeonly of curmudgeons. Um, <laughs> the epitome of troublemaking. Um, just just the worst. I play the worst. Could you do that uh, on the again? So I finally have a face to a name. Annika. Annika. Oh, is that the, the beefy lady one? Wait, no. The bastard, yes. I play the bastard. Oh, okay. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that laugh that cackle i love it i love it so much. um and uh yes uh i should start i should put like a public place to uh to put the setting document that is still very much in progress but uh yeah you'll, this will not be the the last you'll see of the gods of new braemar um right. so yeah i'll be i'm also in the discord server so uh ping me if you want to see the document, um, and uh, if you want to like run a few games yourself, let me know. Um, thank you very much. And I think we should uh, get prepped for uh, Emissaries of Avithna to start uh, very, very soon. Um, it's going to be a great time. <laughs> All right. Thank you thank very much. Um, and we'll see you all so, so soon. <laughs> Tune in next week for another episode of Vibrant, Visible, and Victorious. <laughs>